Day 11, writing is really slowed down. Just put in my words into the NaNoWriMo website, 16,811. And it says I won't finish till December 3rd. But that's okay because as of next week, I'm gonna have like twice the time to do the writing. The sanguine expectation of happiness, which is happiness itself. I want to talk today a little about character foils. Character foil is, is it's like a pairing of two characters where uh, one character is the contrast to the other character. A good example of this is Mr. Darcy and Mr. Wickham in Pride and Prejudice. One has all the goodness and the other all the appearance of it. God, just quoting that book makes me want to have a cup of tea. Foils are fun to get put together and also a lot of fun to read. It's one of my favourite things about reading is trying to find all the characters that match up and contrast in different ways. And the less obvious the foil is the better because it's having an impact on the reader's experience without them going, oh that's obvious. Sometimes foils are used to talk about the right way of doing something versus the wrong way of doing something. So in, in Pride and Prejudice we have um, Mr. and Mrs. Bennet, their marriage is not particularly good, uh, and their foil is Mr. and Mrs. Gardner, whose marriage is, you know, pretty awesome. One foil that I was thinking about last time I read Pride and Prejudice was Colonel Fitzwilliam and Mr. Collins, and they're both kind of representing different ways of courting. Mr. Collins comes to the Bennet household to find a wife and then leave, so find a woman in one visit. Whereas Colonel Fitzwilliam, he is repeatedly going to Rosings, and yes, I do think he's caught in the areas of Rosings. One is trying to do it quickly, the other is, you know, taking his time, being being a gentleman, even though it's still a bit weird. One of the more amusing pairings, of course, is uh, Mr. Darcy and Mr. Collins. Both take manners and rank a little too seriously. Both try for Elizabeth's hand, fail, and then try again. Sorry if you're not an Austenite, but she was just really good at foils. On a simplistic level, Hermione is a foil for Ron just because Hermione is clever and Ron and their contrast allows Harry to exist somewhere in the middle. It's a very obvious sort of foil, and it's not the sort of foil that, you know, inspires. But hey, it does work. In Lord of the Rings, Frodo is upper class and reasonably clever, and his companion is lower class and a bit stupid. But then it's Sam at the end of the book who actually resists the power of the ring. So, that way foils are used to talk about two different types of character which are both valuable in different ways. So how do you use foils in your writing? I'm actually not too sure, it's not something I've actively done before. I presume it's something that needs to be nutted out in the planning stage. The trick is to have two characters that have a lot of parallels to each other in some ways, but are very different in other ways. If they're just very different and don't have a lot of parallels, then it's called having different characters. So has, has anyone act, ever actually tried to put foils in their stories before who's watching? If you have, leave it down where the goblins go. Also leave anything else you like down there, anything you think I should touch on in the video. Ask me any question, nonsense or serious, and I'll answer it in some combination of those things. Thanks for watching guys. I'm going now. Wish you all a very fond farewell.